So hello everyone, welcome to our second live here on Facebook. And remember, we'll also upload this live series to our IGTV and YouTube channels so you can watch again later on. Um, and as always, BJF is honored to have you here. And today we're going to talk about the Cerrado Savannah, the richest savannah in the world. So my name is Dimitrios Kevinin. I am Brazilian. I am a forest engineer and project coordinator at the Black Jaguar Foundation, proudly. Well, those who watched us last week, we, uh, they, we, you already know, but those, for those who don't, uh, the Black Jaguar Foundation is a Dutch-Brazilian organization founded by Ben Volks, a Dutch entrepreneur. Once, he went out in an adventure to see a Black Jaguar in the very heart of Brazil. Instead, he came across fire, deforestation, and destruction. So he decided that he would do something about it. Since then, our mission has been the restoration of degraded ecosystems alongside the Araguaia River to form a mosaic and an immense biodiversity corridor. And this corridor encompasses an area or of 10.4 million hectares, that's 2,600 kilometers long and up to 40 kilometers wide. This corridor connects two very important biomes in Brazil and in the world, the Amazon rainforest that we discussed it last week, and the Cerrado Savanna, as you can see in the image. And today we're going to talk about the Cerrado, of course. So, uh, savannas are found all around the world in tropical and temperate climates. And the most typical tropical savanna that comes to mind is the African one, right? So, sparse acacia trees, grasses, and lots of big and charismatic animals such as elephants, giraffes, rhinos, and all the animals that we already know. But uh, tropical savannas are found in other places and always, always bordering tropical forests around the world, usually where climate has a marked dry season and there's like a disturbance regime that can be either big animals grazing, seasonal fires, or uh, most frequently both of them, right? And, uh, in, very important, tropical savannas are also places of high biodiversity. And it is in Brazil where we can find the richest savanna of all, the Cerrado. Yes, it's pronounced Cerrado, even with both R's. Well, uh, you can see here in the map, it used to spread across 23% of the Brazilian territory, around 198 million hectares, right here in the heart of Brazil, with more than 11,500 plant species and many, many animal species as well. So the Cerrado Savanna is considered a biodiversity hotspot. Well, in this picture, we can see what we call the typical Cerrado, or Cerrado Stricto Senso in Latin, a landscape of small sparse trees interspersed with grasses, shrubs, orchids, and bromeliads. Although most of the Cerrado indeed looks like a typical savanna, we'll see that there are many more physiognomies associated with it. Well, um, climate in the Cerrado savanna is tropical with a marked dry season from May to September. And during the dry season, it's common for the region not to have like a single drop of rain for many, many months, which, is, which doesn't happen in the Amazon region, because in the Amazon region we have the dry season, but it often rains in the dry season as well. Uh, in the Cerrado, however, when the rainy season arrives, bringing moisture from the Amazon, then water becomes like very, very abundant. Um, the Cerrado Savannah region is also known for its beautiful landscapes, like this one, as you can see in the image, in uh, Chapada dos Viadeiros National Park. Very beautiful, lots of waterfalls. This other one from Chapada dos Guimarães National Park. Also this one from Jalapão State Park in the, in the, in the state of Tocantins and this other one from Nobres in the state of Mato Grosso. Well, uh, what some people don't know is that the typical Cerrado is actually an upside-down forest, so a great deal of its biomass is actually underground with deep roots that reach groundwaters. 
These roots make the soil more porous, allowing a huge amount of water to infiltrate and recharge immense underground reservoirs, like the Guarani Aquifer, for example. So it's very important. Because of that, it is said that the Cerrado Savana is the mother of rivers, since a great deal of the Brazilian rivers are born in there, like the São Francisco River, for example. And the Araguaia River is no different. The Araguaia River actually starts in the south of uh, the state of Goiás, so in, in the Cerrado region as well. And then it goes up to the Amazon. Well, uh, yeah, as you can see here in this image, I had forgotten about it. So uh, the Araguaia River starts here in the south of Goiás, and then it stretches across the Cerrado biome, and then enters the Amazon, and then it meets the Atlantic Ocean. Um, well, last week we talked about how soils in the Amazon were poor in nutrients, right? You remember that. Well, <laughs> nothing compared to the Cerrado, though. Not only the soil in the Cerrado region has a low concentration of the most fundamental minerals, as it has, as it has a high content of aluminium, which is considered to be very toxic, very toxic for plants, but uh, Cerrado's fauna and flora are actually very adapted to it, so that they don't have a problem in growing in these conditions. But um, regular crops, for example, they can have a problem with all this toxicity from, from the aluminium and the low uh, pH. It's very, a very acid soil and also the lack of nutrients. Well, as I said previously, most of the Cerrado indeed looks like a typical savanna. However, there can be such a variation of ecosystems within this biome that it can get a little confusing. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit more. Let's dig into that. Uh, so you can see here in this list, and there are actually more than the ones I'm showing you here in this image, but, they, but these seeks are the main physiognomies one can find within the biome, ordered by crescent tree density. So we have open grasslands, typical savanna, Vereda, which I'll explain later to you what it is, gallery forest, Cerradão, which is a type of forest at savanna, semi-deciduous and deciduous forests as well. So this all will vary uh, depending on soil conditions and de depending on proximity to water as well. So the first one that I mentioned is the grassland. So this is a typical grassland within the Cerrado domain. Uh, this was not deforested, uh, it's, it's, a, it's naturally treeless, so it, it doesn't have any trees. And usually the grassland is associated to poor sandy soil, so even poorer than the average. And it can be either dry or seasonally floated sometimes. Uh, so yeah, this is all native, this is all natural. Also, some of the grasslands, some of, some of the fields can be covered with beautiful flowers, like this one that we call here in Brazil, Chuveirinho, which translates into little shower. Um, and uh, in some places, small trees are present. So they have thick barks that resist to fires. They are kind of small. And this is what we call the typical Cerrado or Cerrado Stricto Senso. So it looks pretty much like this. So smarse, small sparse trees and grasses and shrubs around it. But uh, trees can grow denser sometimes whenever the soil uh, allows it to, and they can form what we call a forested savanna. And we call it here in Brazil, Cerradão, which translates into big Cerrado, but it's actually a forested savanna. It is a savanna that grew so thick and so dense that it looks like a forest. But all those species, all those tree species that you can see are actually savanna species. They are not forest species. Okay, but it looks like a forest because soil soil allows it to, and also there's no uh, there there are no not not many disturbances in the area. Okay. Also, alongside rivers and streams, we can find what we call the gallery forest, and it, it is like a thin stripe of forest that grows only on riverbanks. So you can see here that that we have open grasslands and then forest that grows only in the riverbanks, only alongside rivers. So that we call gallery forest. And then the species that we can find here are forest species. They are not savanna species. Okay. 
and uh, where streams spread through flatter areas, often floating them. We have a type of palm tree forest or savanna that's called vereda. Yes, vereda is actually um, a, a Brazilian word to pathway. Okay, so pathway vereda, where this majestic buriti palm tree grows abundantly. So this palm tree is called buriti. It's very typical in central Brazil, and it forms like a, a, a single species forest or savanna that grows in floated sites. Uh, it's very beautiful. My, I myself consider it to be the most beautiful palm tree of Brazil. Uh, and lastly, where soil conditions are a little better, one can find tall semi-deciduals or deciduals uh, tropical forest that can resemble the Amazon rainforest or the Atlantic rainforest uh, according to the proximity to each one of them. Okay. So the Cerrado Savannah is actually a mosaic of different environments, which makes it so unique and biodiverse. Well, one might ask which of these physiognomies I just showed you, showed you is the richest one. And the answer may actually surprise you. Actually, the less dense formations are richer in species, especially plant species. So does that mean that the Cerrado is poor in tree varieties? Absolutely not. It just means that the herbaceous stratum is so, so rich that it surpasses trees in terms of plant species. So small plants account for 80% of the Cerrado, Cerrado biodiversity. So it's a lot, a lot of biodiversity. So the less dense physiognomies in the Cerrado region are actually the richer. Okay. Well, very interesting fauna can also be found in the Cerrado, like the giant anteater. So this is a very interesting species of mammal that eat ants and termites. So very interesting as well. The guara wolf, species of deer, and uh, this big strange bird that we call Emma, and also, of course, the jaguar. Like the Amazon, also the Cerrado was home to many pre-Columbian populations with rich culture. However, due to European colonization, many people were killed or forced to migrate to the Amazon region. And now the Cerrado in Brazil is known to be the country's cropland or plantation. And also for holding the capital. So the capital of Brazil, that's called Brasilia, is located within the Cerrado biome. Well, fire, huh, yeah. So last week I explained how fire was used to destroy the Amazon rainforest once the vegetation was already dried. So, uh, well, in the Cerrado things happen a little differently. So fire here is part of the system and plants are adapted to it. Many of them can only reproduce themselves after a fire. Yes, very impressive. So the Cerrado is a very resilient biome that can recover itself after disturbance. So fire is part of the system here. And the Cerrado is a very resilient biome, as I said, and it can recover even from this type of disturbance. Very impressive. It is actually what you do to the area after it's been destroyed that will determine the capacity of, of recovery of the Cerrado biome. If one simply brings down the vegetation, set it on fire, and then abandon it, when he or she comes back to the site after a while, the Cerrado will be there again. Yeah, brought back by natural regeneration. Even cattle grazing is not able to destroy the Cerrado on its own. But then, what is? Well, the first thing is the introduction of exotic species in the Cerrado region. So for you to have an example, in the 20th century, African grasses like this one you see in the picture were brought to Brazil to feed cattle since they were more nutritious and adapted to heavy grazing. But small native plants are no match for these grasses. No match. They cannot reproduce, they cannot grow in the middle of, of such grasses. And these exotic grasses, they invade natural areas and they're much, much more efficient in reproducing themselves. They also have a higher biomass, which makes natural fires hotter and more, destruct more destructive. 
Once established, it is very, very hard to remove them. It's like a nightmare. So if you remember that 80% of the Cerrado, the Cerrado's biodiversity is in small plants, then you can see the amount of damage these exotic grasses can do. Okay. Um, yeah. So this exotic grasses in the Cerrado. Also, uh, industrial agriculture is a major problem. So industrial soil cultivation destroys underground structures of native plants, like uh, rhizomes, for example, and then eliminate the self-regenerating capacity of the Cerrado because natural regeneration in the Cerrado it is not provided by seeds, by dispersed seeds um, or, or small plants. They're actually provided by these underground structures. So if you destroy the Cerrado, but you don't destroy these underground structures, then the Cerrado will most likely come back uh, by natural regeneration. But if you, uh, if, you, if you plow the soil so hardly that you destroy these underground structures, then the damage is beyond repair and you, do, you must do active restoration to bring the vegetation back. So it's not easy. Therefore, 50% of the Cerrado has been lost already. You can see here in the image, in blue, the areas that have been lost, okay? And in green, the remaining uh, vegetation in the Cerrado biome. So it's a lot uh, for, you to have a, for you to have an idea. Last week, I talked about the Amazon, and 20% of the Amazon uh, was already gone. But the Cerrado is more about 50%, so it's a lot. And unfortunately, not much of it is preserved under national parks, as you can see here in light green, or other conservation land in dark green. So, yeah, it's not enough. Not enough to hold the vegetation. And uh, restoring the Cerrado, as I said, is a huge, huge challenge. Uh, much greater than restoring a forest like the Amazon, unfortunately. And often it's only possible to restore it partially. So um, about the Araguaia Biodiversity Corridor, you can see here in the image that almost half of the corridor is located within the Cerrado biome. So we have ahead of us a huge challenge in restoring uh, those private lands within the Cerrado region. So um, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, it's the, the orange portion of the corridor that is that is the Cerrado region. So restoration ecology, which is the science behind ecological restoration, keeps researching new and effective ways to, to restore the Cerrado. Science is evolving, and so does PJF. We keep, we keep always trying to find new techniques and to improve the ones that already exist to ensure that we have the, the best quality restoration within the Cerrado region as well. Uh, so far, only one of our restoration sites is located in the Cerrado biome, in a forested savanna, to be more precise. Uh, and you can see here in the image our uh, happy field coordinator, Carlos Eduardo. He's standing in a, in a place where the soil has been prepared already to receive seedlings, which um, have already been planted. Uh, we planted them in, in the end of the year, in the, by December. Uh, following the rainy season. Um, and to restore degraded portions of the Cerrado is actually vital for keeping such immense biodiversity alive and also for the environmental services that the Cerrado, the Cerrado provide to us, like water production, for example. And, uh, well, if you want to get to know more about our work, please access black-jaguar.org and consider donating to us so we can continue this amazing work and also follow us on our social media for updates. I thank you now very much for your attention tonight or afternoon, depending on, on where you're watching from. And I will now open for questions from the audience that I hope my dear friend uh, Daisy has selected them. Uh, let's see here. I have also some other questions that arrived here from my WhatsApp. Okay, so why do savannas have such a high biodiversity? Well, uh, almost all ecosystems, apart from deserts that are located in the tropical regions, are very high in biodiversity. So the more resources you have, like especially abundant sunlight, 
it it, it kind of creates a, 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 a bit a, a better condition for for species to evolve and to differentiate between themselves. The case in the Cerrado biome is actually um, that it it was bigger and then it was smaller through uh, geological ages. So this helped differentiate a lot the species, and then lots of species uh, appeared in the Cerrado biome and also merged with the Amazon sometimes, and then the Atlantic forest, and then other portions of uh, other biomes in Brazil, like uh, Caatinga, which is another type of savanna that we have in Brazil, and also the Gran Chaco that we have uh, in Paraguay. So all these other biomes, they contributed to enhancing the biodiversity of the Cerrado. So that's why it's richer than the other savannas as well. But in general, tropical savannas are very rich in species because there's uh, an abundance of resources. Uh, the Amazon rainforest, the second question, the Amazon rainforest is already there since the Cretaceous area. How old is the Cerrado and how is it interrelated with the Amazon area? Well, um, well, it, it is said that the Cerrado is, is older than the Amazon, but it is what I, I said previously. Um, there were uh, there were ages when the the Cerrado was bigger, and then the Amazon was smaller, and then the Amazon grew bigger, and then the Cerrado was smaller, and then it separated into islands, and then uh, it, it connects with most of the biomes in Brazil. The Cerrado is like a, a, a joint of all biomes in Brazil, and it's very specialized. So, um, yeah, I kind of answered that uh, before. Oh, this is very interesting as well. The third question is, if the soil is so acid and lack of minerals, how can this area be so productive for agriculture? Yes, very heavy fertilization. So, uh, for you to have a cropland, for you to, for you to cultivate like corn and soybeans in the Sahara region, one must fertilize it heavily. So heavy amounts of chemicals, uh, fertilizers, and uh, also limestone, so you can uh, raise the pH of the soil. So, and that's why it is so hard to restore the Cerrado after it's been used for cropland, because you have modified even the, the conditions of the soil. So if, if plants in the Cerrado region are adapted to the poor soil and the acid, um, then if you if you change that how can you restore a cerrado back to its previous conditions it's it's very very hard but i can explain to you uh more about this in the in in the live i'm gonna do about ecological restoration as i understand uh, the, the fourth question as i understand the cerrado is the source of many rivers how can how come when there there are, when these are lacking water so much for the bigger part of the year. Yeah, uh, the thing with the Cerrado is that uh, it's actually, it actually rains a lot in the Cerrado region. So it rains around uh, 1,500 millimeters a year, for you to have an idea. But the thing is that this rain is concentrated within six months of the year. The, other, the, the rest of the six months are dry months, but it's not that it lacks rain. It's different, for example, from the other biome we have in Brazil, which is the Caatinga. It's another type of savanna, very, very dry. Then it lacks rain, it lacks water. In the Cerrado, it, it doesn't lack water. It just, it's uh, unevenly distributed throughout the year, okay? How come that the Amazon is so well known around the world while the Cerrado is hardly known? Yeah, um, that's an interesting question. And I think personally it's because we give so great value to forests today and um, I mean because they can storage, they, they, they are like a very big storage of carbon. So we tend to give more value to them and then we forget about other biomes that also need conservation, that also need restoration. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately the Amazon is much more known than the Cerrado and I hope uh, this lives will change that perception. So presence of uh, quartz, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so crystals influencing the type of vegetation. Yeah, so there, there's a lot of silicon in the soils of, uh, of the Cerrado biome, so it's very sandy. 
so it retains um, it, it's not able to retain so much water that's why it infiltrates a lot and uh, recharges underground water as well so yeah the presence of these crystals they influence they influence the vegetation so yeah it's it is less uh, it makes water less available for the plants okay uh, we have more questions here coming so how natural fire occurs in the Cerrado? So usually natural fires are caused by lightning strikes. Yeah. So fire season is overlapped with the beginning of the rainy season. So it's not unusual to rain after a fire. This also helps the vegetation to recover itself faster. Uh, however, whenever there's anthropogenic fire, whenever fire is caused by humans, it happens in the peak of the dry season, so it, and usually burns larger areas because there's no rain to um, to put out the fire afterwards. So it's different. Natural fires occur from lightning and often often followed by rains. Oh, here is a question here, very interesting. Um, does the no does the novel Grande Sertão Veredas take take place in the Cerrado biome? Very very nice question. Uh, oh, that that question could be could be done by my, by my mother because she loves that novel. So yes, uh, for those who don't know, uh, this is a masterpiece of Brazilian literature. It was written in 1956 by Brazilian writer João Guimarães Rosa. And in English, the title of the book is "The Devil to Pay in the Backlands." I think that's it. Let me just check here. Yeah, it is. The Devil to Pay in the Backlands. But in Portuguese, it is Grande Sertão Veredas. So the original title refers to the Veredas, which I just explained to you what it is, are those uh, palm tree forests and savannas that uh, that we can find within the Cerrado biome. And I, I think you, you guys should check it. Uh, it's an, an amazing book. It's an amazing story. Although I must say most of the beauty of the book is lost in the translation because it's so poetic in Portuguese. Uh, but the book describes landscapes and ways of life that are, that are found in the Cerrado region. Yeah, now there's even a national park to preserve the landscapes from the book. And you, you should definitely definitely check it out. It, it's called The Devil to Pay in the Backlands in English and Grande Sertão Veredas uh, from João Guimarães Rosa. Uh, okay, so last question. What is the ideal technique to restore the Cerrado? Well, uh, there's no such thing as the ideal technique. Uh, one must evaluate all site conditions to make a decision about that. And But um, hold on, I will explain more in our live about ecological restoration in, uh, in about two weeks. So stay tuned to our social media, to our Facebook, and we'll most certainly talk about it uh, in the following weeks. So I think uh, that's it. And I thank you all very much for your attention today. See you soon. Take care, stay healthy, and see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.